Hey guys, welcome back to our restoration project. Today, we're gonna to take on the Recaro seat hinges. So we have all of our upholstery work done on both seat sets, including the headrest, which we're gonna go over on the next video. Uh, today's video, we're basically gonna cover, um, as you can see, everything laid out on the bench here, everything that covers the mechanical operation and reassembly of the seat hinges and the levers to lock in your uh, seat as your forward and rear adjustment put those together also. Um, quite a bit going on with these. I haven't been able to find any good reading online, any good images of how to put these back together. Nothing in the manual. So uh, we're kind of reinventing the wheel here unless uh, somebody's already been through this and has some uh, good techniques. I have seen uh, online some really ingenious uh, tools made up to leverage those springs uh, that are gonna be real tough to put back on these hinges. Um, I'm going to try a simpler approach and uh, in our mock-up it, it seemed to work so we'll see once we get grease on there if it's actually going to work out for us. So um, let's first start by uh, laying everything out in this proper orientation and I think the best way to go about this is we'll just go through all the hinges at the same stage. We'll bring them all up together uh, so you can have a real good feel of what's a left hand, your right hand, your driver side and a passenger side. A uh, lot of subtle differences between them. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's have a close-up look here and see what we got laid out on the bench here. And I think I have the orientation correct uh, for driver's side and passenger side. Although I'm just going off of old photographs and it's been uh, about two and a half years since I've taken these apart. Um, so I've completely forgotten how they disassemble and reassemble. Um, just going off uh, basically some old photographs and uh, just studying them real hard just to figure out how they would work. So let's start with the driver's side, which I think is... Uh, going to be the correct way to do it here. This is the driver's side setup left hinge and this is going to be the right side of the driver's side hinge and subtle differences between the passenger side and driver's side here. This is going to be the left hinge of the passenger side. What's different about this is this setup here. We don't have that on this side here. Well, that's something to note there. Um, so if you see those you're definitely working with the passenger side hinge. There. So I had to take a die grinder and buzz off the washer that was holding that down. There's a washer and I made a custom screw there uh, to be able to put this back together. Um, otherwise there's no way to really put it back together. You'd either have to weld it, um, in which case you would destroy the chrome work on it, or glue, uh, some kind of epoxy, but I don't think that would be strong enough to hold it. So really have to be very careful with that section. Uh, tap it. I'm using an M4.07 uh, pitch and that seemed to be just the right size going down in there. See if we can get in there. See those threads in there. Get just enough threads where you can get some bite is going to be really helpful. Okay, so then uh, for our next step here, uh, we're going to grease up all the inside of our gear sets there and uh, grease up our plastic bushings and put them in place on all four pieces. Um, also, I don't know what's going on with my audio here, guys, so please bear with me. <laughs> Always seems to be something with uh, my iPhone uh, video work here. Um, I've got a new iPhone, but for some reason, my uh, headphones are making all kinds of racket. So we just do the best we can here as we describe how to put all this together. Okay, so I'm just using some general purpose grease, some petroleum-based general purpose going to be a lot of metal to metal contact so we want to make sure we get all of it in our bushing all right so let's have a look at that so uh, the important thing here I think when we're assembling these is just to continually maintain uh, the proper orientation in sets because there's so many parts. Once we put these heavy springs on there, if we've made a mistake, uh, could actually damage something or even hurt ourselves trying to undo it and redo it. So uh, this is the way it makes sense. Let's just keep it this way as we keep going. So the next step then is going to be to grease up this uh, second part of the hinge and then overlay it onto this part. A bit of grease inside here and also on this surface here. Like that. So now you can see the need for that bushing down in there. If we didn't have that, then you would have a metal to metal 
situation in the end, uh, that wouldn't work too well. Next, we're going to put a little grease on the inside of our nut. And that feels about right. And then put our lock washer in there. And then when we get them all done, just take a big socket and, uh, you know, it should be about the same size as that washer. And just give it a good whack. Make sure it's nice and flat. So our spring's going to sit down on top of that. And we want to make sure it's not rocking. All right, moving on to our next step then. So everything's working real good. Uh, we just got to install these springs. And these are really, really tight. So what we're going to have to do... Uh, we're going to have to lubricate them so they don't hang up as we're trying to hook them over this edge here. So we're going to want to lubricate this area here. Plenty of grease on there. And also the back side and cram it between the coils here. And we want to keep it away from this edge right here. We don't want any grease on that at this moment. About there. And then once we're on there, we'll go ahead and grease up this side here. And then we can get some grease down in there. All right, let's see how that works now. Okay, that's real tight. That's going to work. And then we'll try this one from a different angle. So you can see I'm half on, half off there. And then next, we're going to install our gear caps. Kind of interesting how all this works. And kind of see here, it just meshes down in there. And then next, we're going to put our lever arm and spring in place. So this is how it's going to uh, set up here. Got some vice grips on there, so when we put it in place, we can pull around. We don't need to really grip it. Um, and to get this out, when, when you're disassembling, you're going to have to flare both these uh, tabs here open in order for this to pull out. Um, once you've got everything replated and uh, ready to put back together, what we'll have to do is uh, press it back into location, uh, hold it down with a clamp, and then uh, once everything's in position, then we can repinch. And now we gotta try and pinch it back. There it goes. 
guys. A little bit tighter. Torque on that a little bit just for leverage. Okay, that's got that pinched in there a lot better. Not quite seated in there. There it is. Okay, that's definitely not going anywhere. Okay, next we'll put our lever arms on. A little grease on the back side. This side. Grease the back side of these washers. Yes, that's it. Okay, things are getting a little bit tricky now. So next we gotta slide our cover. Uh, these are from Stoddard. Uh, we'll put those on here like so, being careful not to lose our spring. in. Actually, the top keys in. There we go. Alright, so then once all our plastic caps are in place, uh, the last thing we'll want to do then is put our uh, rubber retainer cap over our uh, actuator levers. And what this is going to do, uh, this is going to stop our plastic caps from popping off when our lever is actuated. So when we pull that, this is going to rise and uh, the cap underneath it, that spline cap, is going to be pushing on our plastic. So that'll pop that off there. That's the whole purpose of this here is to keep the cap in place. If this is too tight, drawn down too tight, then you won't be able to release your uh, lever far enough for your seat to come forward. Uh, so that's why you don't want it too tight. So it's just basically sitting on there. If you can spin it, that seems to be about the right setting. And then that would be the same also for this one over here. That's about the right setting there. And uh, the only other thing I don't really like about these covers they seem to uh, key in the top real nice and, and fit the area properly, but uh, where they plug in to the housing here, uh, it's a little bit loose in there, and they seem to keep popping off uh, when I work that lever. So let me get these cleaned up with some denatured alcohol. Uh, if those continue to pop up there, then I think what I'll do is I'll take some uh, two-sided sure tape and uh, 
put a little sliver into there and there and see if that doesn't hold that in place a little bit better. So just having a quick look here to see how our tape's going to work out. So it seems to be working on the rest of them. I'll just show you how I'm doing that. What we're trying to do is take up the free space inside that cavity in there and drive our peg right down into it. So I'm just using the sure tape to take that up. Drive it right down in there. And then a quick look here at our finished product before we install them on our seats. This is our passenger setup and driver setup. I like to use this 303 speed detailer to polish up all my chrome work. It's real gentle and uh, does a real nice job, no streaks, soft microfiber rag, really brings it up nice and protects it. Beautiful chrome plating job by Advanced Plating. And then a quick look at our adjustment lever and hardware. So we'll put this on next and then we'll move on to installing our hinges. So I've just rolled through the driver's side real quick just to figure out how to put it together. Um, so the position is going to be uh, pointing inwards and down for our stem. And this is how the spring sets up. Grabs onto a roll pin there. Uh, just basically got a couple of pegs that drift in there and they don't come all the way through, so that's gonna be the setup there. So first thing we wanna do is we just wanna run a small radius file down here and clean out any kind of burrs or uh, excessive paint in there just to make sure we're good. And line it right up on our roll pin. And then we're just rotating until we line up our pinholes. Our pins are directional. The tapered end goes in first. There it is. All right, and then on with our hinges. So we'll start with the passenger side first. So we've got two spacers that are gonna go on here. Running a tap down all our holes. Make sure we're cleaned out. Press on like so. And then inside our beauty washers, uh, we're going to get an external lock washer. So anytime you see the splines on the outside, this is called an external lock washer. With the splines on the inside, it's an internal lock washer. And then a little Loctite on these threads. Not that we need the holding power, but what we want to do is we want to lubricate the screw as it's going in so we don't damage the new chrome in a nice size screwdriver to help it along. I'm using a number three. That feels like it right there. And then next we'll put a little grease on our splines. Not that there's any movement here, but uh, grease is sticky. So if there's any vibration, any kind of free space in there, it'll stop that from making any noise. And then some red rubber grease around our inner bushing. And it just slides inside, presses in place, all right, so if you can hang this washer your hinge is seated. If that doesn't hang, then it's definitely not seated. Might need a little persuasion. Right there. All right, I'm gonna roll through the driver's side real quick and then we'll put them side by side together and have a close-up look. All right, it looks like uh, everything's gonna work out for us. So here's a close-up look at our driver's side and our knob in place there. So this has been refinished with a uh, base coat, clear coat, and you can still see our Recaro logo on the uh, tip of it there. And a POR 15 on our framework. And then the, this has been re-zinc plated and polished. And you can see here, so we can lift the seat forward. They're working together like they should on the driver's side. And then our reclining lever is working, uh, but we won't be able to tell 
uh, how these seats are going to recline. They're already in the full forward position. Um, you're going to need these bolted in the car with the seat back in and uh, full body weight pressed against it to get those springs to uh, relax on you and get that to lean back. So there's no way we can really bench test this one here, but it is working. And then looking at our passenger side here, so the only difference here is going to be our safety bar. So right now we're locked in, so it's not possible to bring that hinge forward or the seat back forward. But if we lift our lever, then she goes. And then panning back there just to see how they would set up in the car. A really, really beautiful workmanship from a car 50 years ago. Unbelievable amount of work in those seats. Absolutely gorgeous. So if you're working on your Recaro seat hinges, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, really, they're not too difficult. whole thing there is just to keep everything in sets and uh, not to get too far ahead of yourself. Uh, but basically, real simple to put together. Um, and so on our next video, we're going to go over the headrest, the seat back, and get these installed in the car. Well, thanks for watching. Be safe, and we'll see you on the next video.